Hey everyone, it's Aggie. Today I wanted to share some of my best tools for managing my anxiety and generally improving my mental wellness. My goal was really to offer tools and resources that were unique, specific, and actually work. Uh, so I am a big proponent of professional help like medications and therapy if that's what you need, but I thought this would be really helpful as sort of a supplemental resources list. It should help in some way. It just helps to center me and and these things were really important for helping me keep track of my thoughts and take hold of my anxiety. So take what you like and leave what you don't, but I really hope you find this helpful. So number one on my list is Otter. This is an app that is free, which is always an added bonus, and it's a really handy app in general because it's a voice recording tool that also transcribes your words into a written record. So there's like a written text of what you say out loud, so you're basically dictating. and. Once again, it's free. You actually have to input an email, but you have the option to upgrade to the premium or paid version, or you could keep using the free version like I am. And I really like to use this app for what I like to call spoken journaling. So I'm a huge fan of traditional journaling and just gathering your thoughts, but this is really for when you just kind of want to gather your thoughts, but you don't necessarily want to write them down. You just kind of want to talk it out, but maybe you don't want to do it on the phone and talk to someone quite yet. It's really great for when you're in the privacy of your own home or in your car while you're driving. It's a really good tool that way because if you're like me, sometimes you have to talk things out and the act of trying to put them into words and articulating them and saying them out loud kind of helps to organize everything in a really different way. And I kind of feel like in those situations where you're not able to sit down with a pen and paper for an extended period of time, it's a really good way to just kind of get it out. Number two journaling. This is no secret. We all know journaling is incredibly helpful for untangling our thoughts and our worries, but I did want to offer a special twist. So there is regular traditional journaling, which is great. It's the bread and butter of the journaling world. But if you're looking for something more targeted, oh, do I have a treat for you. If you're working through a conflict or even a thought that is negatively impacting you, I highly recommend Byron Katie's The Work. On her website, she offers free downloadable resources like these. The Judge Your Neighbor Worksheet is for working through your negative feelings about someone else, and the One Belief at a Time Worksheet is for challenging any thoughts that are causing you suffering. You'll have to try for yourself, but let me tell you, this last part called the turnarounds is my favorite part, and it is so powerful. It's effective unlike anything else I've seen out there, yet it's so simple and accessible. Number three is maybe you should talk to someone. That is this book by Lori Gottlieb, and it was actually recommended to me by a friend during the pandemic, and I ended up loving it so much that I reread it like once or twice after the original time. Basically, the premise is that it's written in the point of view of a therapist, and she talks about five different patients. So four of them are her own patients while she's working as a therapist, all going through um, really different, like diverse types of problems, yet they're all kind of connected, and the surprise comes because the fifth patient is actually the therapist herself after she goes through a big life-changing event. So she kind of ties in the, the humanity piece of all the patients, and it's a really, really good read. I really couldn't put it down. I finished this big book in like, I think two days or something like that, I really just couldn't put it down. So it was really, really awesome. But when I found out that there was a workbook, I was super excited. It's based off of the book, so it will be helpful if you read that first, because she has these prompts, like these super specific prompts, and she sets it up by reminding you of like a character that she writes about in her book. So really helpful if you read that book first. But I did this workbook in the course of like a year. Um, it's basically about like editing your life story and taking like a more objective and an edit focused view of your life. Really helpful, really, really cool. Um, and again, I think sometimes it's more helpful if there is some direction when it comes to journaling versus you and the blank page. I don't know, I find a lot of different kinds of journaling helpful, so I thought this would be a really cool resource to share. Number four is how to meet yourself. 
So this is another workbook by another psychologist and she basically talks about how to face your emotional tendencies, your habits, and your um, ultimately, you know, cultivating your authentic self and kind of like releasing that part of you. This is actually one that I'm still working through currently. So as you can see, my bookmark is right there. I I haven't gone through too much of it. I did start it a while ago and for me, I just feel like I need to be able to pick up this kind of a thing like throughout the course of a long period of time for it to be the most helpful. Plus, after you're finished with it, when you go back and read it, you'll see just how much your thoughts really did transform over the course of that year or however long you take to do the workbook. Number five, meditation. Meditation is another one of those things that I'm sure everyone hears about, but I'm going to share how I like to meditate. I've been meditating regularly for about seven years, so I've tried a lot of different types of meditations out there, but I think the most accessible way is to use apps, especially if you're starting out. The first app I'd recommend is, of course, Spotify. You can use YouTube as well, but what I really like about Spotify is the range of playlists they have. So you can search up meditation and pick the playlist that you like best. The other apps are more meditation focused and of course free, although you do have the option of using the paid version. I like Tide for the simple to use interface, they've got timers on the app, and honestly I've never used the timers because I tend to forget about that feature, but I really like that you get a loop of whatever sound you pick so you don't feel an interruption in your meditation like you would if the music changed every few minutes. The last meditation app I've been loving is the Tapping Solution. It uses the tapping of certain meridian points on your body like acupressure and it's called emotional freedom technique or EFT. It feels a little silly doing it at first but if you're the kind of person who can't sit still for a meditation it's a great option because it keeps part of your brain busy but also focused on the meditation itself. Once you get used to it it's a really cool way to like zone in and sometimes I like to do this first if I feel like I'm having a particularly more difficult day, just kind of sliding right into my regular meditation. I like to do the tapping. They have a ton of different options, even in the free version. And I like to do that, then it leads me right into my regular meditation. So those were my top five tools for managing anxiety and mental health. I hope they helped you out. And one thing that I didn't talk about as much this time around, but I still want to mention here is as much as mental and emotional and spiritual health are all intertwined and we are all aware of this, don't forget physical health as well, because in a lot of ways, everything depends on physical health and is very, very intertwined with physical health. So make sure you are doing the basics of getting enough sleep, like high quality sleep, make sure you're eating clean, healthy, whole foods and moving your body enough, all of that stuff. Anyways, I hope these helped you out. I'm going to leave a bunch of links in the description for the resources themselves, but also, you know, a little more information in case you want to read up on some stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching and that's it for today. So I will see you in the next one. Bye.